Remember when your 8th grade geometry class did that weird unit on logic that really seemed out of place from the rest of the class? Yeah, I still feel like that could have been taught differently. But regardless, we're going to finally give you a place to apply some of that logic. You don't need to dust off your middle school textbook, but do you remember if-then statements? It turns out that those are very useful in writing programs. For example, if it's the user's birthday, then alert all of their Facebook contacts so that they will now have 654 acquaintances that they haven't interacted with since their last birthday now to respond to. Or if the user clicks this link, then load this page. Or if the user enters a number outside of the correct range, then make them start all over again. The ability to insert an if-then statement into your code opens up endless possibilities, and today we're going to make all that possible. Computer science, the golden arena of endless well-paying jobs, needs problem solvers from all backgrounds, but appears surrounded by a thick wall of incomprehensible ones and zeros, self-righteous nerd minions, and endless differential equation nightmares. This video textbook attempts to create an entrance through that wall by teaching programming basics in the language of real people. This video is a lecture covering programming tools and methods. To watch a real-life example in three different coding languages, click here. And to listen to this chapter's lecture on computer science beyond programming, click here. So in math, the correct term for an if-then statement is actually a conditional statement. But in computer science, we almost refer to those as two separate but connected pieces of code. Let me show you. In most languages, the syntax for an if statement is identical. And to make it easy, we're just going to drop the then and call them if statements from now on. So we'll start by writing an if, and then parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we'll put a conditional statement that can be eventually simplified into one of two states, either true or false. If it simplifies to true, then all the code contained in the curly brackets immediately following will run. If the condition simplifies to false, then the computer will simply just skip that section of the program. So let's run through an example. Let's say that you want to add a senior discount to your billing software. If you already know the user was a senior, you could simply just put a Boolean variable right here. We'll call it is senior. If that's true, then the program will run all of this code. But this time, let's let the computer decide whether someone's a senior or not. Let's just say that we were able to store their age in a variable called user's age. Now we can use this data to write the conditional statement. Our statement can be, if user age is greater than 54, and by the way, this is the greater than operator, then apply the discount. When the computer runs this code, it will first simplify the conditional statement and replace it with either true or false. And then it will either run the code or skip it entirely. So let me explain something that might have been just a little bit confusing. So at least in America, businesses often offer their patrons a small discount if they're 55 years or older. So you might be wondering why I chose the arbitrary number 54 for this example. And here's the reason. If we were to write 55, the computer would only evaluate the statement true for numbers that are greater than 55. So if these were integers we were dealing with, only people 56 or older would actually set off the statement. Because 55 is actually equal to not greater than 55. And of course it could be a little bit different if you're working with floats because then you could just have a decimal that's just slightly greater than 55. That's something you have to think through when you're using less than or greater than operators. Now there is another operator that can solve this problem and make the code just a little bit easier to read. We can use the greater than or equal to or less than or equal to operators if we'd like. Whichever you choose is really more of a matter of what makes the code easier to read than actually following a set of rules. In fact, I'll just go ahead and use this in the next example to show you. So now, what if you had more than one condition that you'd like to apply? Like maybe a special discount for seniors who learned about your business from an ad in a crossword book. Let's ask the user for a promo code from that specific ad. Now we'll store it in the constant promo. Your statement could look like this then. If user age is greater than or equal to 55 and the promo equals don't get old, then apply the discount. So here's that greater than or equal to operator. This is the and operator and this is the is equal to operator, or equal operator. The computer will first look at each side of the AND operator and simplify each side to either true or false. Then it will simplify the true or false data on either side of the AND operator to determine if the whole condition is true or not. If we use the AND operator, then both conditions must be true before the whole statement can be evaluated as true. If we use the OR operator, and you'll have to hit the shift and the backslash key twice to get this. If either of the conditions are true, then the whole statement will evaluate as true. There's one more operator that you should be aware of, and this is the not operator. The not operator kind of just negates all the other operators. For example, this is true when two sides do not equal each other. And this simplifies to true when the Boolean is storing a false. Now we call these three different kinds of operators, the and, or, or not operators, Boolean operators, because of their roots in Boolean algebra. You can add as many conditions as you want to your conditional statement by connecting them with Boolean operators. However, this can make things look a little messy. For example, if A equals B, or C equals D, or D equals A, and B equals C, that's all valid, but how would you evaluate that? See, that's false, or false, or true, 
and true. So is this all false, or is this all true? I don't even want to try with this. Now most languages have an order of precedence to handle really hard situations like this, but it's going to differ from language to language, and unless you've memorized it, it's going to be very easy to confuse yourself about which statements it's evaluating first. So to keep this readable for nearly every language, here's a simple trick you can use to keep your conditionals straight. Remember back in algebra when you could just simply put parentheses around things to make sure that they follow your order of operations? Well, you can do the exact same thing with conditional statements. The computer will evaluate the most inward parentheses first, replace that whole statement with either a true or false, and then continue its evaluation. See, that's a little bit easier to understand to me. Now there's another tool we can use in our if statements that can be really, really handy. Maybe you want one block of code to run if the condition is true, and another block of code to run if it's false. By following the if statement by the keyword else, in a similar curly bracketed code block, it will run the first set when the condition is true, and the second set if it's false. You can even catch other instances with additional if and condition after each else statement. And you can keep on stacking else statements on top of each other. We call this the if block, the else if block, and the else block. If the pizza is paid for, print the receipt and deliver pizza. Else if the pizza is partially paid for, request the remaining balance. Else ask if that's everything and request payment. Actually, if that isn't everything, I don't want to start requesting payment until we're actually done. So I can use another if statement here to check the response. So let's store the response in a Boolean variable called is everything. Now we'll use that as the conditional statement. If is everything, then request payment. Look at that. I used this if statement inside of an if statement. That's crazy, but it works really well. We call this a nested if statement and man, are they useful. They can also be really hard to read. So it's an important programming convention to indent each layer of if statement. So it's easy to see when one starts and one stops. Well, that's probably enough about if statements for now. Let's go practice it in the exercise. Mm -hmm.